In this time of, of heightened concern over federal spending, some suggest that austerity demands we turn a blind eye to the crisis in Congo. I believe nothing could be more misguided. It would simply be uh, penny wise and pound foolish to allow the Congo to, to again fall into a state of crisis or for the humanitarian chaos. We strongly believe that if we continue to place Congo on the back burner of U.S. policy, it will indeed come back to haunt us. The federal budget may indeed be a zero-sum game, but our, our morality, our sense of decency, our compassion for our fellow human beings is not. The path to stability in today's Congo requires fostering stable elections and preventing another disaster that could easily require hundreds of millions of dollars in assistance. I humbly suggest that the U.S. government take a hard look at its current commitment and find a way to do more. Come November, we must be able to look ourselves in the eye and say that we did what our principles demanded. We helped democracy emerge in a place where tragedy was the alternative. We believe in being free from the tyranny of violence. We believe in life and liberty, and we believe that basic human rights are not just important, they're not just something to be worked toward but a fundamental right to be demanded for all mankind. These ideas make us who we are. They make us great. But if our foreign policy does not reflect these ideals, it completely undermines them. The Congolese people simply want to live their lives in peace, earn a decent living, and raise their families, just like the rest of us. They want a voice in their country's governance. They want a voice in their country's governance. They want a voice in their country's governance. I will never give in to, to the naysayers who suggest Congo is hopeless or too complex. It is not. The 70 million people of Congo deserve a better tomorrow, and the Eastern Congo Initiative will do our small part to ensure that it does.